Welcome back everybody to the Dark Forest. Or should I say, welcome to the jungle. I hope you enjoy the stories tonight. I hope they don't keep you up too late. Now, without further ado, let's get spooky. I live in Southern Nevada. I've grown up here most of my life. I don't live in Las Vegas, but I do live in one of the surrounding cities. I, for one, am totally sick of living in the desert. It's just ugly, it's just dirt. I want to live somewhere with mountains and trees and woods, somewhere beautiful. But for now, you just have to accept where you are, I guess. The one good thing about the desert is at night, when it gets cool, and the stars are just... They just look closer than usual, almost like you could put your finger up and touch it. Anyways, me and my buddy Charlie were camping over at the hilltop campgrounds near the Juniper Trailhead. It was just supposed to be an overnight thing, you know, Saturday through Sunday. That's what we usually do because I don't like showering at campgrounds, I'd rather just shower at home. Once we arrived, we emptied out his truck and set everything up in its appropriate place and set up the tent. I cracked open a beer because, hell, it was hot outside. I was telling my buddy about this trail that I wanted to check out. It was called the North Loop Trailhead. It wasn't too far from where we were, and it was uphill and definitely a nice challenge. So, the day was young. We got our waters, got everything we needed for this hike, and we were on our way. I have to say, this hike was actually really awesome. It was not as difficult as I was expecting, but it was still uphill, which sucks. But there were some beautiful sights to see. There was this really old tree, and there was these crazy looking flowers. I mean, there was just some really cool sights there. We really enjoyed the hike. It was on our way back to our camping site when we saw it though the beast as we were walking back down the dirt trail we saw this really large animal crossing the dirt path it was pretty far ahead of us but still you could see its girth it was dragging some other animal by its mouth at first I thought I was just getting my first glimpse of a mountain lion. But I was terribly mistaken. I want to say we were probably somewhere near a hundred feet of the beast. Maybe a little farther. I can't really tell to be honest. As we got our closer glimpse, we noticed it was no mountain lion. We only had about a few seconds before this beast noticed that it was being watched as it turned its head directly at us, and I could see its dead eyes. I swear, it had only turned to look at us for maybe one second, maybe two at the most. Then, it leapt straight up on the side of the mountain nearby it, and out of sight, leaving the mangled body of what looked like a fox. I could still remember the way this beast looked. It had the upper body of some kind of bodybuilder when it jumped on the side of the mountain. It jumped the same way as a human, with its arms reaching up towards the rocks almost over its head. It had long, thick, jet black hair, but you could still see the muscular definition. The facial features, from what I could remember, again, it all happened so fast. It had the features of a large dog with pointy ears. That's about all I could remember. It was truly horrifying. After a few moments after that beast was out of sight, we finally got the courage to run back towards camp. We grabbed most of our stuff that we could, leaving the larger items behind, and we raced the hell out of there. 
needless to say, we never went back there to go camping ever again. I was RV camping with my family over at the Riverbend Campground in Leeds, Maine. We had just gotten there, parked, got everything situated at the picnic table, and we were just enjoying some lunch. This happened last spring, right before summertime. The weather was perfect. My brother and I were just following the river. It just happened to be called Dead River, that led to the Androscoggin Lake. In the distance from that lake, there's an island, and this island is rumored to be haunted. Haunted by the Goatman. The island's called Norris Island, and at the north end of the island, there's a Norris Island cabin. It's a nice, cute little old-school white cabin. But the tale is frightening. A lot of the locals don't know about it, but then again, Maybe they're just pretending, because I know a lot of the kids in my high school, they know about the myth. Anyways, I was always a skeptic, so we were just following the dead river to the lake. We were just admiring the beauty, swinging some sticks around that we casually found along the trail, breaking down nearby bushes and weeds. When my brother and I had reached the edge of the lake... We just stood there and gazed at the nearby island in front of us. I'm not terribly sure how deep it was, but I definitely wanted to get over to that cabin. I heard about what happened to those kids. You see, legend has it that there were some high school students that actually ventured off in the night over there in some boat that one of their parents owned, and they broke in and started vandalizing that white cabin in the night. The only problem was, legend has it that they weren't alone. I had my compass, and my brother actually brought his binoculars. When we started walking around the edge of the lake, bored, trying to figure out how in the world we were going to get over to that island, we didn't have a boat, and I didn't see any other boats or any other kids whatsoever within the area where we were at. I think the time was somewhere between 3 and 5 p.m. I know it was after lunch sometime, but it was before dinner. That I do remember. Fast forward a little while. We were still at the edge of the lake, just walking around and laughing and just shooting the shikakas, you know? That's when we heard it. There was no denying what direction that noise was coming from. We both quickly hopped down to the ground behind some brush, scared out of our minds looking over at the island. The sun was not even setting yet. It was still pure daylight outside. What the hell was that? Then I motioned to my brother. Dude, give me your binoculars. I think I saw movement. My brother was frozen, but he took his binoculars off from around his neck and handed them to me. I put the binoculars to my eyes and I started examining the island from right to left. As I reached towards the left, which was the north end side, I saw... I saw something... There was some humanoid-type figure running off away from that little white cabin. I tried to follow its movements, but it was so fast. From what I saw, it was almost of a dark brownish orangish color, maybe with a hint of silver. It ran upright like a man. But its face... Its face was not human. It had horns and a snout. 
it looked like a goat. I saw the goat man. He is real. This happened to me and my girlfriend last fall. We're from Salt Lake City, but we took a road trip down south in Utah to Bluff to do some hiking for the weekend and then just kick it at some hotel. The first day was amazing. We took a trip near the river, and then we had some lunch. We decided the rest of the day we were going to go hiking, so I did some googling of my own. We decided to make a full day out of it. Well, pretty much after lunch, that is. So we drove over to the Lower Fish Creek Canyon Trail. It's roughly three and a half to eight miles long, and it looked spectacular. Neither one of us have ever been down here to bluff, but a couple of co-workers had mentioned it to me in the past that there's some really good hiking trails to see. The reason why I picked the Lower Fish Creek Canyon is that the pleasant off-the-beaten-path trail on the Lower Fish Creek Canyon offers a degree of solitude not found on other trails that are in that area. I was told that once you pass the first mile, you could actually spot the first ruin across the canyon. Then, right before three miles, there's another six more ruins, two of which contain multiple structures of rock art. We decided to take our time with it, so we periodically took little breaks, took selfies, took pictures of each other, and of course just took random pictures of the scenery. It was kind of crazy, because when we got towards the last ruin, well at least the last one that we saw, we both started hearing a very familiar yet off-pitch voice echoing throughout the canyon nearby. Johnny, I need your help. I was hiking and I fell down and injured myself. I need your help. Johnny, over here, hurry. I don't expect anyone to recognize that voice. It was definitely off, but still very similar to my coworker. It sounded like Adeline, but different. Whoever or whatever was in that canyon knew my name. It started to freak me out because it kept calling my name and it echoed all throughout the canyon surrounding us. Johnny, that's it. You're getting warmer. Keep going. You're almost here. And I swear to you, the more we continued on that hike, the louder it was. I stroked some type of common sense and I told my girlfriend we need to turn back and head back towards the car. She didn't argue with me. We heard the voice maybe one more time as we backtracked back to the parking lot. But that was it. We haven't been back to Bluff ever since. This story is not quite scary, but it's more of an encounter that is just unexplainable. My friends and I were riding our quads and dirt bikes out in eastern Arizona, I would say a couple hours away from where we lived back over in the Phoenix area. One of my buddies had a big old 2500 Dodge Ram with an RV attached where we would sleep at, and of course we just figured we would just make camp right in front with a fire pit and drink and tell jokes and stories after we had ridden all day, and of course the occasional barbecue. Can't forget that. So, we were cruising around, racing each other, just having fun. You know, just a few bros out there just having a good time riding bikes. That evening, though, that's when it happened. This is totally true. 
I'm not making any of this story up. We had just ridden for a few hours, so this is evening time now. The sun's down, the fire's on, and my buddy Jimmy, he's barbecuing the carne asada on the charcoal grill in between the fire pit and the RV. Everybody else was kind of circled around the area around the fire pit to the left. We had the music blasted, and we were just having fun. We've been out there a hundred times. That's our go-to place to ride bikes. But that night was different. I don't remember exactly what time it was. It was definitely pretty late. Of course, none of us planned on going to bed early. All of a sudden, we heard it. Out in the distance, somewhere off in the desert, That scared the crap out of me. I almost dropped my beer. I looked over to my friends. They were all dumbfounded as much as I was. None of us could figure out what the hell that was. Then, everything just went completely silent. Not just us, but the whole desert around us completely and utterly quiet. We all started screaming and freaking out, trying to figure out what the hell was going on. You know, at first we just thought it was some coyote or something, but this... This was not a coyote. They don't speak. I know we're close to native land, but shoot, what the hell is going on? Jimmy and I, we wanted to get the hell out of there. But our other two friends just wanted to brush it off and just continued the night. Their excuse was that we're close to native land and it's probably just some Indians trying to scare us off because we're too close. Well, if they're going through all this trouble, maybe it's a good idea just to go. But of course, nobody listens to me. So, we all stay on high alert, and we walk over and sit back near the fire pit. But this time, we're all on full alert. So I'm sitting by the fire pit to where I'm facing the outskirts of the desert, so my back was towards the RV. So was Jimmy's. The other two were on the opposite side of the fire pit facing the RV and their backs towards the desert. So we were all sitting there around the fire, talking about the noises that we heard and trying to decipher what the heck it was. I think it was something cryptid, as I've heard legends and stories about creatures and things around the Navajo tribes. Jimmy said, maybe, but that's more likely to be on some movies. Our other two friends just thought it was just wild dogs or coyotes or something. I mean, realistically, none of us truly knew what the heck was going on. We were all just letting our imagination get the better of us, I guess. That was... Until Jimmy and I saw something out there in the outskirts of the desert. It was pitch black out, but still, somewhere about 30 meters away or so, again, I'm just guessing, I saw movement of something that was running on all fours, like a dog. Then, it turned to us and stopped, right in its tracks like it knew I was looking at it. I'm assuming that it was jet black, had black fur, I don't know. It definitely blended in with the darkness of the desert. But as soon as that thing turned its head towards us, its eyes were gleaming somehow. Then, it hopped up on its back two legs and took off running farther out like a man. I couldn't believe what I saw. This thing like transformed 
and just took off into the desert. Jimmy kind of saw it, but again, I think I saw it better than he did. He, he only told me the last part of what he saw. He saw some guy running off. I saw what it was before it was a guy. Our other two friends think we're crazy. We ended up spending the rest of the night there. We didn't see anything else, and we didn't have any issues or problems. But I refused to go back there to ride our dirt bikes. I found somewhere else to go. Well, kitties, I hope that you all enjoyed the Dogman, Skinwalkers, Wendigo, and Goatman encounter stories tonight. I would say it was a frightful good time, if I say so myself. Shout out to my new Patreon, Matthew Bauer. You rock. If you would like to be a Patreon, just check it out. The link will be in the description box down below, along with my other social media accounts, along with my online merchandise store, and my email for direct PayPal donations. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll... See you next time.